No mai, haere mai, ki te whenua. Welcome to the land and skies of our ancestors. From our mountains and our seas. From these grounds and waters of Australia. And Aotearoa, New Zealand. We welcome the FIFA Women's World Cup 2023 to come and play at ours. Welcome everyone, football fans across the globe. My name is Kirsty Stanway and I'm so excited to be here to help unveil the official brand of the FIFA Women's World Cup Australia and New Zealand 2023 as we continue the countdown to the tournament. To get things started, I'd like to introduce our very first guest. She's a proud New Zealander and she's doing big things on the world stage. She's FIFA's Chief Women's Football Officer, Sarai Beerman. Kia ora, Sarai. All right. Kia ora Kirsty and kia ora koutou to everyone watching from around the world. So you're coming to us from Switzerland? That's right, I'm in Zurich uh, in the home of FIFA and also home for me at the moment. I've got to ask, how does it feel to be bringing the world's biggest professional female sporting event to your own backyard? It's absolutely massive. It's so exciting. I absolutely can't wait. This is a massive, massive global event. It's the single biggest female sporting event in the world. The eyes of the world are going to be upon New Zealand and Australia in 2023. And I can't wait for, you know, the people back home to really feel that, to feel part of it and to be proud to showcase our two beautiful countries. So what can visiting fans expect from the tournament? They're going to be part of a massive festival of football. Not only what we see in the stadiums, on the pitches, obviously the football is going to be incredible, but also around it. To be able to see the two beautiful countries, to experience the culture, to be part of that atmosphere, it's going to be absolutely massive. Thanks so much, Sarai. I would now like to introduce our next two guests. Both of them are accomplished players for their very own national teams. Uh, it is my great pleasure to welcome in from the Australian national side, Kaya Simon, who has played 100 matches for the Matildas. And from New Zealand, Hannah Wilkinson, who's played 100 matches for the Football Ferns. Ladies, thank you so much for joining us. It is so great to see your smiling faces. Uh, Kaya, I'm going to come to you first. What was what was it like when you heard the news that Australia would co-host the tournament and where were you? I was in Sydney, Australia uh, with a few other teammates. It was actually my birthday on the eve of the announcement. I was with my teammates in the early hours of the morning in Sydney when it got announced and we were just ecstatic with the news. Um, you know, as little girls we dreamt of playing in FIFA Women's World Cups and representing our, our country wearing the green and gold. And, um, to finally, I guess, have the news that we would actually host one in our own backyard uh, was such an amazing moment and it gives me goosebumps even thinking about it now. Hannah, what does it mean to be able to bring the world to your home turf and actually have home turf advantage? Oh, it means absolutely everything. I think it's truly exciting that football's finally being brought to this side of the world and awesome to be able to to you know, showcase all of our hard work in front of our family and our friends. Oh, you just couldn't ask for, for anything better. Kaya, you were the first Indigenous player to score a goal ever at a World Cup. Take us back to that moment. Remind us of what it was like. I remember after I scored the first goal, looking up in the stands and seeing my family there and they had you know, the Aboriginal flag there, which they carry with them um, every time they come and support me. And I just remember the roar of the crowd my teammates jumping on top of me and uh, I actually didn't know, um, you know, that I'd created a little bit of history with those two goals until after the game and, and a journalist said it to me. Love it. Well, thank you, ladies, so much. We're not done yet. The main reason why we are here is to share the FIFA Women's World Cup 2023 brand identity with you and the rest of the world. We're almost ready to hit that play button, but just before we do, Sarai, are you able to give us a, a little uh, indication of what we're about to watch? 
Look, I think the first thing to say is that the Women's World Cup is so much more than a sports event. It's about so much more than what happens on the pitches in those stadiums. And I think at the moment, there is so much to be said about the empowerment of women, the position of women in society. And this is two countries that we're going to that are both very progressive in terms of the way that women are positioned. And it's important for us that we have a brand that aligns and resonates with that. We want a brand that is not just about the football, but it can bring everyone along, football fan or not, to be part of this movement, because women's football really is a cultural movement. And the brand and the video that you're about to see is absolutely going to showcase that. So I'm really, really excited for everyone to see this. And here it is. Greatness is all around us. On pitches, fields, and playgrounds. At home and far away. It lives in the past. And it's in the faces we look up to. And in those we see every day. Greatness is all around us. It takes us beyond limitations, beyond possibility. Beyond doubt. Beyond expectations. The only question is, where will it take us next? Wow, if that doesn't give you the feels, I don't know what will. That is what we've all been waiting for. The FIFA Women's World Cup Australia and New Zealand 2023 official emblem, official slogan and official sound identity too. Let's get some reaction. Kaya, what are your thoughts? Yeah, it gave me goosebumps. It gave me butterflies. Like you said, it gave me all the feels. Yeah, I mean, it made me excited. I just can't wait for the tournament to come around. I, I wish it was this year. So, right, I imagine you played a key role in driving the development of this brand identity. Yes, absolutely. I think the core purpose of the Women's World Cup is to showcase women's football talent and also to promote women's football across the globe. So it was really important that we had a brand that is truly global, but also represents uniquely the two host countries. And in order to do that, we partnered with two amazing Indigenous female artists, Sinead Sutton from Australia and Fiona Collis from New Zealand. And you can see actually the beautiful Aboriginal and Māori designs that are woven throughout the brand. And seeing that come to life in the stadiums, on the streets, is gonna be so amazing. And I think it's gonna connect so well with the local people. And what about that sound identity? What's the story behind that? I have to talk a little bit about Kelly Lee Owens, the incredible artist, the producer that put this soundtrack together. From the moment we started working with her, she absolutely nailed it. And you can hear it, the goosebumps, you can feel it. It's incredible. And I think it's the perfect soundtrack for the FIFA Women's World Cup. Well, I'm glad everyone loves the official sound identity because our final guest, Kelly Lee Owens, joins us now. Kelly, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Thanks for having me. Can you explain to us what the inspiration was behind this amazing track? Well, obviously, you know, working very closely with FIFA from the beginning was incredible. Um, and yes, our values were completely aligned, just the kind of future of, of women in general and um, incorporating everything, the past, the present and the future. And they kept using the word, you know, epic. And I just took that and <laughs> run with it and went as epic and as bold as I possibly could. So it was also just really, really fun. When you talk about epicness, uh, the slogan, the theme beyond greatness is pretty epic. How do you transform it into music? I just thought, wow, like this actual like idea is really, really powerful. And so I just put everything I had into it, rising arpeggios, rising bass lines, choirs, you know, it's led with my voice. All of the vocals on the track are myself apart from choirs. And I wanted the sense of community brought in with choirs, you know, no one, um, does this, has this game alone, really. Like this, this is a team environment and a team spirit and a global spirit. So yeah, just blessed to be part of something so, so epic, yeah. 
Uh, Hannah, you're a woman of many talents, uh, a great footballer, but also an accomplished musician as well. Um, what's the relationship like between football and music? It's a really strong form of expression and, and something that, you know, you kind of connect your, um, your soul into and you kind of lose yourself into it. And, and football's the same way. When you're performing well, you're losing yourself into it. So there's a lot of overlaps in those two. I have my guitar everywhere I go on tour and hear, hearing Kelly's soundtrack, um, you know, on that video was so special and it's such a good um, tune to have in with this, uh, this massive event and so I'm so excited. Kelly, you can't wipe the smile off your face. How do you feel <laughs> after hearing what Hannah said? Oh, I'm just so thrilled that everyone really connects to it because obviously I had in mind the stadium really was my main objective is like that moment where people come together and I wanted to inspire the players and also everyone that was watching around the world and also in attendance like you know it's, it's called like unity because it really is that moment where we all come together and we've all been craving that so so much and yeah I want to inspire the players I want it to be euphoric and uplifting and something that once you hear that you feel you have the confidence and the boldness to just go out there and play the best game of football you've ever played. <laughs> Sarai, if there's one final message for all of those viewers, for the fans that can't wait for the FIFA Women's World Cup, what have you got to say to them? Get behind it. Get behind your local team. Get behind your national team. Get to know the players. You know, the qualifying campaign has started. It's already started. And as I said, it's a movement and we need everyone to be part of this. You know, women's football and what we're trying to achieve for women in society is absolutely massive. And the platform of the FIFA Women's World Cup is the biggest platform that we have to achieve those objectives. And it's really important that everyone gets behind it. Well, you're all amazing human beings and now we cannot wait to experience beyond greatness in these two beautiful countries. There's really no better place to celebrate the start of the next chapter for women's football. But sadly, we have to say goodbye for now. But let's be honest, this is really just the start of an incredible journey. To each of you, thank you so much for joining us. Sarai, Kelly, Kaya and to Hannah as well. And all the very best with your respective roads to the top tournament. Ka kite anō. Matewa, everyone. Well, there you have it. And this will be a tournament of first, the first FIFA Women's World Cup to be hosted by two countries and two football confederations. The first FIFA Women's World Cup to feature 32 teams, 10 stadia and 64 matches, plus a fresh and unique visual and sonic brand with a challenge for you and for everyone involved to go beyond football, beyond possibilities and beyond greatness. From down under to the world, thank you so much for being a part of this today and we'll see you soon on the road to the FIFA Women's World Cup Australia and New Zealand 2023.